Hey guys, your boy Beer Mac here in our video. Today we're going to talk about Steve Sarkeesian and his hire at Texas, how I feel about it. So I don't think I ever really made a video really talking about how I felt about the hire, whether I think it was a good move, whether I think it was too early, too premature, what I thought about it. So my opinion, let's start off that because I'm going to go dive in a little bit about Steve uh, Sarkeesian's career and all that, a little bit about his career. Uh, I might do a little some a video tomorrow or something um, after the Jeremy uh, Pruitt, Pruitt um, firing with Tennessee about uh this staff he has there right now i know he brought uh jeff banks with him from Oak, uh, from, uh, from, from, from alabama he also has uh floods there and he also has i'm gonna say uh uh, 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 uh not Bo, but um what's the guy's name camera got a wide receiver coach the camera's name he's he's he's, he's pretty good camera's name on top of my head but um anyways go on and dive with all those guys and the staff he's bringing in there. They still haven't got a linebackers coach. They still haven't got a defensive coordinator. Um, still don't have a linebackers coach. All that's still unknown at Texas. So um, by the time I make this video tomorrow about the whole staff and it's going about their careers and shit, um, if something pops up, I'll you know make a video about that. And the reason why I'm so interested about this Texas deal is because I think this will prove. Because I already think this. I I I didn't. I wouldn't say I really think. I think this is a good hire, honestly. I, I, even though I think they should have waited another year for Tom for give Tom Herman another chance. I honestly think this is this is a good hire. But I think after this, then you're gonna know if this was a was it a Texas? Is it like a is it a culture problem? Which I think I de and you ask a lot of college football fans. I think it's a culture problem. I think there's too many boosters that want to be the the guy that's known for bringing Texas back. When you can't always be that guy, you know, I'm sorry. You got to let the coach work his magic and all that. Um, so we'll see. I I, I I, mean, we'll see. But uh, diving uh, Steve Sarkeesian's uh, career, he started out at USC as a core, as a Corbett's coach in 2002. Then uh, I want to say around 2004, he went to go coach the Oakland Raiders as a, cor as a Corbett coach again. Came back 2005 years later to USC again. Where he basically was there from 08 or from 05 to 08, and after that 09 he went to Washington and became a head coach there. Um, also back at USC he coached a bunch of Heisman or two Heisman quarterbacks. Um, I think uh, Carson Palmer was one. Um, I think Mark Sanchez was there when he was there. I'm pretty sure he had some first round picks. So yeah, no, he, he was a good he was a good 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 quarterback coach. Um, then went over in 2000. Uh, Nine or yeah, I think it was yeah, 2009. He went to go be the Washington head coach, which I mean, in his defense, that Washington team was bad for a long time there. Um, that past five years since that 2019 or before he got there, I want to say they were like only had 12 wins and one of the seasons were like they were winless. So that's a tough job to take, anyways. Um, especially when he, has, when he was having the lost success there at USC as a quarterbacks coach. And I also, also, I think I'll say he became like the offensive coordinator or something like that at one point. Yeah, I want to say his role at one point, he had offensive coordinator uh, from that little stretch at USC from 05 to uh, 08. So uh, as time went on, he became Washington head coach. Um, he ended up being like 35 and like, or no, 34 and 29. Yeah, 34 and 29. One of the seasons I won, so it was the 2013 season, he went, uh, he went ahead and won like eight games, which is the most – Washington won at that point since like 2000 at that point when he was there so and then I want to say after that 2013 season 14 he went over to go to USC back to USC and became the offensive coach or the head coach there where he went 12 and 6 as a, as a whole record um and I want to say that's when they were going through their whole suspension thing or they're just not getting over one or two I can't remember right now but a lot of things are going the USC still hasn't recovered from all that all that stuff so I mean Whatever I know, one of the years he was like he got USC second place in the Pac-12 Southern Division or something like that. I remember that, but I mean, I, I wouldn't really. I mean, I'm pretty sure USC fans wouldn't win that. He'd not be second place in their division. So um, then he went over to Alabama, where he became an analyst for a little bit. Um, then he went to. I think after that, he went to. He actually coached. He had, became office coordinator in 2017. Yeah, 2017, he became the office coordinator there. Uh, for the college football championship, the national or the their championship game, and then after that, he went on to go to Atlanta for two two years. Um, he had a pretty good 
offensive coordinating gig over there in Atlanta for a little bit. He was um once that he was like had like when Carson Palmer was like top three or top five for like throwing yards. He had their offense like top ten in the league. So I mean yeah, he had a good little stunt there at Atlanta. And then he came back to Alabama to be the offensive coordinator for Nick Saban. We all know how that went. Um so yeah, I mean and now he's at Texas. Um I really hope that Texas – because the thing about me in Texas is that I hate Texas. I can't stand them. I hate the color orange. I hate everything orange. I hate the fruit orange. And I'm not making that up. I really hate everything orange. I just don't like orange. I, I just don't. And maybe it's just a sooner in me. I don't know since I was born, but I just don't like the orange. I don't. Um, but it is good for OU when they are good and they are hitting on all cylinders because it makes the Red River game look good. It makes the Red River game more important, part of the most important game of the season when we're both ranked top 10 and we're both actually good football teams. And that's overranked. And it's, I just, I don't know, I just really feel like if Texas can figure out what's going on, I, like I, said, I think it's a culture problem. I think it's something to do with the boosters and all that, personally. I think there's too many too many people want to be the boss. And that, and you know what I'm saying, honestly, in that, in that uh, whole university or whatever, for the football program. But... It is good when we have Texas good. Because right now, the Big 12, there's really... I mean, if you look at the Big 12, besides OU, it's been... Yeah, I remember, OU's won... Like, we've won six Big 12 championships. And those six Big 12 championships, we haven't faced the same team. Let's see. So, let's see. We faced Oklahoma State once. Uh, we faced TCU, we faced Iowa State, we faced Texas. We just, uh, we played, hang on, hang on, let me think about this for a second. We might have played Oklahoma State twice for it. Maybe. Maybe. Let me think about this. Did we play Oklahoma State twice, twice for it? Because now we played TCU for what, one year. That was, yeah, that we played TCU one year for it. I want to say that was year with Baker. We played, uh, Texas with Kyle Murray. We played uh, Baylor with Jalen Hurts. We played Oklahoma State with Baylor, with, uh, with Baker, and we played Iowa State. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's been basically different teams for the whole stretch. Um, I'm sorry, it's hard to keep count of having teams. We there's so many teams we have. To, it's not consistent. That's my point. It, well, I have to think about who we've been playing because in, in the SEC championship game, you're almost always saying it's Bama and Georgia or it's Bama and Florida. There's consistency. There, there's always consistency in the uh, SEC. The Big Ten, you're always going to have Ohio State in there. You, and there's a good chance you'll have Penn State or one of them in there. Or Wisconsin. One of those schools. And then, so, I mean, there's always, you always have those, those, those core two or core three teams. In the Big 12, we don't have that. We have OU. We have OU, and that's it. That's all we have. We have us. Everyone else, it's a give me year. It's like one year you'll see Baylor, one year you'll see TCU, one year you'll see Oklahoma State. Uh, you'll see Texas again here. Uh, it's just Iowa State right now. Is, the way Iowa State looking, like, Ohio State. I think Iowa State's gonna be back next year because they return a lot of starters for the next football season. So that's why I'm so interested about this hire, and because I want Texas to actually be worth a damn, and not make me have to fucking wonder every year who the hell we're playing, who we might play in the Big Twelve Championship. Because every year, it's someone different that pops up. I won't have the next three years. I won't be surprised if this keeps on the way it's going. I won't be surprised the next three years is Kansas damn state. The way they they own us the past two seasons, I wouldn't be surprised if it is goddamn Kansas State in the next two years. Damn. I mean, it's just. Oh man, I just I just I'm just ready for someone to be more consistent, be consistent like we are, and just give us you know a run for our money. And don't even Iowa State gives a run for our money. Baylor gives a run for our money. But then the following year, Baylor wasn't worth a damn. TCU wasn't worth a damn when they played us with Baker. Oklahoma State the following year. I mean, Oklahoma State always, is always all right, but they're never, you know, like when we go to Bedlam, we're like, oh, my God, is, 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 oh, it's Oklahoma State, this and this. I mean, we have a little sweat, but ain't like, oh, my God, we're shaking. Like, you know, we are with the Red, uh, Red River game and with the Iowa State game this year we had. Um, so, no, I mean, I'm just ready to see some more consistency in the conference. Honestly, that's why I'm so intrigued by this and want to see how it works. Um, I went to a Red River game last year with Jalen Hurt, or I guess now since this season, over two seasons ago, when Jalen Hurts was – the quarterback at LEU back in 2019. I went to the River game there. 
And, um, I mean, the Red River, the Red River games always want to have, and plus, yeah, my Texas was pretty decently good, too. Uh, even though they lost to LSU, but LSU is the best team, I think, ever in college football besides maybe that Miami team or maybe that, yeah, probably that Miami team. Um, but anyways, no, I went to – and the River Games always don't have that um, assignment to it, you know. It's always going to have it. But um, at some point, you know, man, it's like, damn, if you want to keep this rivalry going and keep the, like, one of the top ones, which I think is always going to be top one. But, I mean, I think it's better than the, uh, the Iron Ball, honestly. I do. I enjoy it more than I do the Iron Ball. I enjoy it more. I mean, and maybe it's well, the Iron Ball. No, the, the Iron Ball is just me as a pure college football fan. Well, no, that's a bull. Actually, that's a lie. I enjoy the Iron Ball a lot. It's because Auburn always they, they always find those years where they beat Bama by something crazy. Um, what I meant to say was Ohio State Michigan game. That rivalry has not been a damn thing. So I don't even care about that rivalry. At least Texas this past year. This person put us in four OTs. I mean, damn, man. I mean, they got so bad. Michigan wouldn't even play at Ohio State. They pulled the COVID car on them. Because they knew they couldn't beat them on the field. So, hey, why not beat you? Or they thought they were going to beat them by not letting them get in the playoffs because they only played five games at that point. They needed to play six um, or something like that. And then the Big Ten changed the rule. And everybody started riding and college football. So, anyways, my point is, if you don't want this game to become like the Ohio State and Michigan game, you want Texas, which, I mean – I don't think it will. I think Texas will always be putting because Texas always puts up a fight against OU just because the talent they have there. The yeah, man, Texas is one of the richest states for recruits with Florida and Cali and Georgia. To me, those are the four, and the DMV is starting to get there too right now. With, with the talent they're pumping out, the DMV too. But um, to me, it's it's really Texas, Florida, Cali, and Georgia that pump out the most um, talent. Um. And losing it to a certain extent too. There, there's a couple states, but mainly those four I was named. Um, so they're in the, the the hotbed for recruits. So they're always going to have a good football team, or they're always going to have not maybe not a good football team, but a one of the top, you know, talented football teams in the nation. So they're always going to put up a fight. So I don't know. I'm just interested to see how this goes, guys. Um, tomorrow I'll upload a video about uh, Jeremy Pruitt. How do you say his last name? God damn it. Uh, Jeremy. I just call him Jeremy Pruitt. Whatever. I just call him Jeremy. But I'll upload a video to him about him tomorrow. Uh, about the Tennessee firing and who Tennessee can get. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Gus goes to Miles on. I, I would not be shocked by that one bit. Not at all. I don't know if he'd take that dumpster fire of a job. But, I mean, I imagine he's looking for a job. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried about the Gus. Um... But, yeah, we'll talk more about it tomorrow, guys. As always, me and boy, Boomer Mackey. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Put notifications on if you want to see when I drop my next video. Um, as always, guys, I've been Boomer Mackey. Peace.